brook. The words of a man's mouth are deep waters. Well, what are deep waters? Deep waters are water that runs very deep. Well, that's pretty obvious. But there are many layers to water. If you think about water, if you're, if you all have ever swam in a stripper pit, anybody ever been in a stripper pit? I don't know uh, if they have those all over the place, but here in southern Indiana, we have we had coal mining that was on the surface. It was surface mining for many many years, and they would go in and they would strip out acres and acres of land, forests. Cities, they would just strip them completely out, and they would, yeah, I'm I'm not talking about that kind of stripper pit. Um, this is a coal mining operation, okay? And they would go in and they would just take out everything. They would destroy the environment and go down very deep into the earth and take out the coal. And it was all open. It wasn't the closed mines like you have in. Um, Pennsylvania and places where they cave they cave in and trap miners. These were all open pits. And they would excavate the coal out. And then when they would leave the area, there would be acres and acres and acres, square miles sometimes, of land that had been laid bare and nothing could grow there. And eventually these pits would fill in with water. And it's it's actually discouraged. I'm not sure if it's illegal at this point or not. At one time it was illegal to swim in these stripper pits because they were very dangerous. They were very, very deep. But this is where all the teenagers hung out. Of course, because we weren't supposed to. We all hung out at the stripper pits on Friday and Saturday nights. And we would swim in the pits. And there would be, every summer two or three kids that would lose their lives in these stripper pits because there was a combination of alcohol and youthful uh, joy, you know, um, not paying attention to what's going on around you, and pretty soon you dive in and you drown because there were places that you could get trapped under rock ledges and things. But as you were going into this pit, there were layers of water. You could feel the layers as you went down because the water was very deep. So at the very top the water would be warm. And as you went down deeper and deeper the water got cooler and cooler and cooler until it actually got cold. There were many layers of water in these stripper pits. And it was always kind of refreshing on a hot July or August day to go down deep enough that you got into the water that made you get goosebumps because it was that cold. You know, and then you would shoot to the surface and you'd come up cold from the stripper pit water. But our words, the words of our mouth, are deep waters. They have many layers. And what we have on the surface may not seem that bad. If you feel sick that day and you walk around and you say oh, I don't feel well that day and you're, you're just talking about on the surface you're not feeling well but the enemy is going around and he's looking constantly for the things you're saying and he will pull you down into deeper and deeper waters with that and as you go down deeper and deeper with the words of your mouth not only are you just not feeling well today maybe you just had a bit of a headache but by the time you repeat that a few times you not only have a headache, but you have a sore throat. Now you have stomach ache. And then pretty soon, you're just carrying on and going down and down and down. And I've shared with you before the woman that I knew for a while who talked herself to death. Because there was always something wrong. She had this, she had that. Pretty soon, she was dead from her intestines rupturing. It was very strange. They said it was a fluke. It wasn't a fluke. She talked herself into death because all she did was talk death and destruction on herself. So your words are very deep. They may seem like on the surface they're nothing. They may seem very harmless, but your words carry very deep meanings and so do mine. 
I'm not just preaching to you guys. Because I'm just as guilty. I was teasing someone today, and whenever I got off work, I said, I think I'm going to go hit a local bar and just become an alcoholic. Well, guess what? I had to repent of that right away, because I'm not going there. What did I do? I put the words out there for, for the enemy to get a hold of. And guess what? The enemy could easily grab a hold of that kind of thing and suck me into that. I was joking. But on the surface, it seemed like a joke. But there's a depth to that kind of thing. And we all know there's a spirit involved with alcoholism. And that spirit can suck you back down into that kind of thing if you've ever been into it in the first place. And so I had to repent really quickly. Because the words of your mouth will snare you. Yeah, the enemy doesn't care if I'm joking. To the enemy, it's words. There's an attitude. He's got you. So I had to repent. And so if you say the wrong words, are you stuck with them forever? No, you repent of what you just said. You break that curse off. It goes along with something like, I repent of that, Lord. I'm sorry I just spoke those words against myself. I'm your servant. Forgive me for speaking those words. And then you say, I rebuke those words off of my life and any effects that they might have in the name of Jesus. You invoke the name of Jesus because guess what? That's the most important word you can ever speak. The name of Jesus. And you rebuke them off of your life. In Luke twenty one thirty three Luke twenty one thirty three Jesus tells us heaven and earth will pass away, but my words will by no means pass away. Now he's given us the same spirit that he had. And if his words will never pass away, what about our words? Once they're out there, they're out there. And they can either live to destruction or or they can live to construction. What's the difference? Well, destruction, you're tearing things down. Construction, you're building up. It's your choice. You can use your words to destroy yourself, your friends, people you don't even know. Or you can use your words to construct. You can construct yourself. You can construct others. You can construct people you don't even know. It's your choice. So watch your words and your attitude. Because the more you speak, the deeper you can dig your hole. In Ecclesiastes 5, verse 2. Ecclesiastes 5 and 2. Do not be rash with your mouth. Don't be quick to say things. And let not your heart utter anything hastily before God. Heart. Attitude. Don't be quick to say words without thinking. And watch your attitude. Don't be uttering things before God without thinking. For God is in heaven and you on earth. Therefore, let your words be few. The more you speak, the deeper your hole gets. With this one child today, when I kept saying to her, you need to close it. Close your mouth. And she kept going. She, went, she got a behavior mark because she was out of her seat. And I said, Lila, you have a behavior mark. And she said, I wasn't talking. She's got this shrill little voice. She's 10, 11 years old. She screams all the time. You know, yeah, scream thing that little girls do. Drives me up a wall. And I said, you have an out-of-seat behavior mark. And she's like, but I wasn't talking. I wasn't talking. And I'm going, Lila, you're talking now. But I wasn't talking. And she just kept going and going. And I said, I said to her, Lila, close it. Stop speaking. Do not speak anymore. But I wasn't talking. You are now. Close your mouth. Put your lips together and press them tightly. But but you're not listening. I wasn't speaking. Guess what? She got a talking mark on top of an out-of-seat mark. 
she had two marks with one conversation. Three marks, she gets a phone call home to mom. Don't think she wants that. Because she's one of those kids that where if she gets a phone call home to mom, she's going to get grounded from TV. She almost, she should have had her three marks, but I knew she was going to get grounded if I called mom. So I didn't give her a third mark. But she really should have had three marks. But the more that she talked, the more that she spoke, the deeper she dug her grave today. She was rash with her mouth, and she didn't use few words. So sometimes the more we speak, the worse it gets. So what I'd like to leave you with this evening is to remember that your words will snare you either for good or bad. And that your attitude with your words counts because someone's watching. And that you need to restrain your words. Muzzle them. And don't be rash. Don't just be uttering things. Don't just be speaking just to be speaking. Make your words few. And if you do these things, the enemy has no entry into your life. And when you're speaking your few words, you need to be speaking good things. Because in Matthew twelve thirty four, it says, How can you, being evil, speak good things? For out of the abundance of the heart the mouth speaks. There's that attitude. A good man out of the good treasure of his heart, heart brings forth good things. And an evil man out of the evil treasure brings forth evil things. But I say to you that for every idle word men may speak, they will give account of it in the day of judgment. For by your words you will be justified, and by your words you will be condemned. So if we speak the words that God has given us to speak that glorify Jesus Christ, that glorify God in heaven, that glorify the Holy Spirit, if we speak those words that glorify what He has given us and what He has done for us, and we honor our Father, those words are the ones we will be snared by. Now wouldn't you just love at the end of your life to stand before the Lord Jesus Christ and have Him say, We snared you by the words of your mouth, and the words of your mouth say that you get to come into heaven, because you made the most important profession with your mouth, and that was when you accepted Jesus Christ as your Savior. But then after that, you continued to glorify the Father in heaven, rather than glorifying your own flesh and your own attitude. Yeah, I love that one, Sid. That's one of my favorite scriptures. So if you're one of these people tonight who's sitting here and you're speaking the wrong words because you don't know Jesus Christ yet because you haven't made the most important profession with your mouth that you could make. The profession that makes you a child of the living God. That brings you into the family of God himself. If you're here tonight and you're that person, then I'm going to give you some words to speak that will snare you into the kingdom of heaven. Words that will make you a child of God. And then after you make this profession with your words, then it's time for you to get into the Bible and start learning the words that will glorify our Father in heaven, that will glorify Jesus Christ, that will help you change your attitude so that you don't snare yourselves for the wrong way. So if you're here tonight and you have never made a profession of Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior, just repeat after me and mean it. Say it with your heart, with your attitude, not just the lips of your mouth. God, I know I'm a sinner and I come to you asking you to forgive me. I ask Jesus to come into my life and to lead me and guide me and forgive me of my sin because I know that he died on the cross so that I could be forgiven. In the name of Jesus, amen.